I spoke about gravitation, relativity, how it comes applied in astronomy. You might wonder, does quantum mechanics play an important role in astronomy? After all, quantum mechanics is very, very important at microscopic scales like atoms, molecules, nucleus, subatomic particles. The answer is yes, because quantum mechanics is universal and therefore, no doubt, it is also applicable to heavenly objects which are gigantic. Now let's get at the basics of quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics basically says that particles behave like waves, waves behave, behave like particles. That is, if any particle it, it has a wavelength lambda, then it has also energy which is hc by lambda. That is, and wave, a wave which has wavelength lambda behaves like a particle of energy e which is sc by lambda. Similarly, a wave of wavelength lambda also has a momentum p which is Planck's constant divided by the wavelength. The moment you say that all particle behaves like waves, all waves like particle, it is understandable. You can't localize waves. There is no meaning of waves having single dimensional trajectory. You immediately see that the particles behave like waves. Particles should not also have one dimensional trajectory. There must be some fuzziness. And that fuzziness was predicted by Heisenberg. And today we call it uncertainty principle, which says that any particle of other part of wave, because as we said, that in nature, everything is displayed both wave and particle like property. And Heisenberg's uncertainty principle states that if a particle has position x and its momentum in the x direction is px, then you can't know both position and the momentum at the same time with infinite accuracy. Rather, there is an uncertainty which says that uncertainty in the position and uncertainty in the momentum has to be greater than the Planck's constant divided by 4 pi. Of course, Planck's constant is very, very tiny. So for macroscopic objects, this uncertainty principle doesn't play much role. But it turns out that when you deal with sources which are either white dwarf stars or neutron stars, then uncertainty principle and Pauli's exclusion principle play a very, very vital role. What is Pauli's exclusion principle? Wolfgang Pauli, a German physicist who was a brilliant man, he, to explain why is it that you have different atoms, why you can't have all the electrons in the lowest energy uh, level for an atom, he deduced that no two electrons can be put in the same state. So this was his first form of Pauli's exclusion principle. Later on, Pauli deduced, Pauli as well as Fermi deduced that any particle that has half integral spin, like electrons, protons, they follow this principle that no two fermions, fermions meaning no two particles that have half integral spin can be put in the same state. Both uncertainty principle of Heisenberg and Pauli's exclusion principle both play a very, very important role in white dwarf star. As I mentioned earlier, that Chandrasekhar was one of the first physicists to use special relativity in the case of white dwarf star to get a critical mass. Today, we call it Chandrasekhar's critical mass. How did his argument arose? Basically, white dwarf is a very, very compact object. For such a compact object, the density of electrons is very, very high. But if the density of electron is very high, then we know uncertainty principle says that you cannot localize a particle to very, very short distance. If you try to do that, it's uncertainty the momentum increases. So density high meaning you're trying to localize the electrons and protons to very, very small distances. If that is so, then its momentum must be very, very high. So the object has to be spread about. You can't keep on compressing it. Then Pauli's exclusion principle says that you cannot put all the electrons very, very close in any case because they can't be in the same state. 
because no two fermions can be in the same state. So Pauli's exclusion principle says that if you try to compress electron gas, then there has to be electrons which are at very, very high energy. And similarly, uncertainty principle says that compression necessarily means that uncertainty in the momenta will be very, very high. Subramaniam Chandrasekhar realized that if the uncertainty of the momentum is very high, the particles which are at high energy levels, they would be moving with speed close to the speed of light. So you have to necessarily use special theory of relativity, which before Chandrasekhar, no one had discussed this. And Chandrasekhar, in his voyage from uh, Mumbai to uh, England at the age of 19, he used special theory of relativity in the analysis of white dwarf star and showed that white dwarfs cannot have mass more than 1.4 times the solar mass. If you try to make it more, it will just collapse. And then Landau, he said that the same thing works for a neutron star. After all, neutron star is made out of neutrons. Neutrons are also fermions. And Again, the same logic of Chandrasekhar applies to neutron star. So you can't also have mass greater than 3.4 times solar mass for the neutron star. The moment the mass goes beyond 3.4 solar mass for a neutron star, it just collapses to a black hole. So the black hole, astrophysical black hole, are a result of quantum theory, namely uncertainty principle, exclusion principle of Pauli, and the gravitational physics. Now, isn't it amazing that the laws of physics that we discover in our terrestrial laboratory, they work so well at cosmic scales and help us to understand heavenly bodies. That means these laws which are discovered on Earth are so universal that they work even in cosmic scales. And that, I find it mind-boggling.